On average, we check our phones every 12 minutes and spend 24 hours a week online. And for a majority of that time, we're leaving a trace of everything we do. It's called our digital footprint, and it's a breakdown of our life online. Everything from the websites we visit and the products we buy, to our social media posts and the news we read. What we like, what we hate, where we go and who we know is all valuable information for anyone who wants to try and sell us something. But how exactly is our data obtained and what can we do to keep it more secure? David, hello! Hello, John, how are you? To find out, I've enlisted the help of David McClelland, a technology journalist and expert in data protection. So how exactly is your information being grabbed? Let me demonstrate with the aid of these conveniently placed cookies. Ooh, this looks good. Online, a cookie is a small digital file used to remember information about your web browsing and, just like these cookies, all internet cookies aren't the same. How about this one? This looks rather yummy. Well, that's ah. what one might call a first-party cookie. And, and these are good because they improve your browsing experience. They do this by remembering things like what we like to read about or what's in our shopping basket and often make our browsing experience quicker and more efficient. The important thing to know about them is that they don't get shared with anyone else. A bit like that cookie. Mm, yeah. Pick another Good. one. Mm, how about this? Aha! That is what you might call a third-party cookie or a tracking cookie. These track your movements online. They're made by specialist websites that pay to place them all over the web and are designed to gather information about you, which is then sold to advertisers. So this is why when I've been searching for things about car programs on the internet, I get ads for particularly unflattering pairs of jeans. Yes, because yep. they think that people who like car programs will like certain style of jeans. In fact, tracking cookies are so prevalent, it's estimated 90% of the world's most popular websites have them. And they're particularly common on news websites, something a program called Lightbeam highlights. These triangles are third-party cookies for the purposes of tracking me around the web. After visiting just two news websites, Lightbeam shows that over 150 cookies have been created. And because a third of those cookies are present on both sites, a more detailed picture of my online behaviour is recorded. Imagine if you're going through a day, a week, mm. a month or a year, all yeah. of these connections build up that profile. But what if you object to being followed around online in this way? Many websites, as per the law, have to put a cookie consent form up there mm. when you visit them for the first time. Mm. Though consenting to these cookies is very tempting, it's important to know that by doing so you could be exposing some of your most personal data, like your age, name, email address and even your phone number and street address. Most people just click on accept and they don't realise the extent to which they're being tracked. Thankfully, there are tools that will stop these cookies from grabbing your data even if you do click accept. Plugins like Privacy Badger for Google Chrome are free and will stop tracking no matter what you click. And for Mac users, the Safari browser already has anti-tracking tech built in. And Google, which makes Chrome, has also said that it's going to stop supporting third-party cookies in the next couple of years. But it's not just our browsing activity which might be tracked. Many believe that our voice assistants record our conversations and the info is then used to target us with advertising. But is this true? What we're going to do is, while we're having some lunch, let's put some choice words into our conversation. I don't know, uh, Amsterdam, trainers, chat about those for half an hour or so. And then when we've finished, let's visit some websites and see if any uh, adverts pop up advertising a uh, holiday in Holland or some smart sneakers. Mm. For our experiment, I'll be using my smartphone, which comes with a voice assistant built in. So, David, have you ever been to Amsterdam? I used to live in Amsterdam. Did you do a lot of walking? I did a lot of walking in Amsterdam, wearing trainers most wearing of trainers. the time. How many pairs of trainers did you get through? Do you Countless think? pairs of trainers in Amsterdam, yes. because the, the walking in Amsterdam is so terrific. I love visiting Amsterdam, mainly to visit the photography galleries, though you do need a good pair of trainers. <laughs> So, after that thoroughly invigorating conversation, has my phone been listening in? So what are you seeing there, John? 
Uh, well, I'm seeing ads for army recruitment, oh. um, some life insurance ads, energy suppliers. But no hits with Amsterdam or trainers. No Amsterdam, no trainers anywhere. And to prove that we weren't using obscure terms which drew a blank, David had typed Amsterdam and trainers into a search engine we knew had third-party cookies and has got rather different results. Guess what? I'm seeing an advert for some trainers, 33% off Ooh. some sneakers here. And I've also seen some breaks for Amsterdam as well. Although our experiment is far from exhaustive, other researchers also found that our phones aren't listening to us without our permission. So, next time you fancy sharing a secret, it's probably OK to leave your phone nearby. Two security concerns well and truly addressed by David, then. However, we'd yet to tackle our biggest digital fear, being hacked. Over the past couple of years, we've seen data breaches at some of the world's biggest company websites. British Airways, Virgin Media, EasyJet and even Twitter have been compromised. So how can we protect ourselves from the darker side of the web? This is Birmingham Steel House Lane lockup, full of individual cells, a bit like our online life, full of individual accounts. As in this old lockup, security is key, and when it comes to protecting our accounts online, it's recommended we should have different passwords for each of them. But if you're anything like me and have hundreds of different accounts, David's got another trick up his sleeve a password manager. This is about £20 per year, which is a small price to pay for peace of mind, I would suggest. And it's got really, really strong encryption, US military grade. A password manager is a secure vault that stores all of your login details. And this one, called Keeper, can even generate passwords for you so you don't have to keep coming up with them yourself. All you need to remember is a master password to access the vault. But what happens if somebody guesses my master password? I've lost all my passwords. There is an extreme level of security that you can go to if you are concerned. Follow me into a cell and I'll show Ooh. you. And that extreme level comes in the shape of a physical security key. In this case, the Yubi key. I'm going to log in, yep. type in my password as I normally would. And now, rather than logging me in, it's saying, use your security key. So, get my security key. I just pop it into this USB slot. You see the key springs to life and it's flashing and it says, touch your security key. I just touch the key and voila. I'm now logged in. Thank you, David. That's been splendidly informative. You're very welcome. Oi! 